Hello friends, welcome to my Royal Family News Channel. Before moving on to the video, if you are not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, so let's move on to the video. Between the rumors and alleged problems, seem to have invaded Harry in Meghan courtship. And it sounds like there may be trouble in paradise, with headlines hinting that the couple are on the brink of divorce even spending time apart. Their time in Montecito has been less than the idyllic new beginning they had hoped for. And it would seem that issues are unavoidable. Viewers were told Harry had been duped because Meghan hadn't married him for love but instead spent years instructing Fleet Street hacks to find her a rich young Englishman. Their story might as well have concluded long ago, had Harry been other. However Meghan managed to beat it, being the stuff of all her teenage dreams despite if she loved him back. Ray's academic pedigree is drastically different than Kylo Ron, making the dynamics between them all that more diverse and interesting. Commentators pick up on how she scores, but woefully reminds all around that Harry looks like a plonker in the bargain. At this point, they need each other despite the issues so far as a couple that play out now in public. Others believe it will be at least five years by the time Meghan decides to finally call and quits. She will never take a blame herself, rather always make the other person accountable for everything. Another main reason that Meghan just might divorce Harry is because she finds someone richer to leech on. Although, this is highly unlikely because many people knows what she has in mind. It's also possible that she sucks Harry dry financially, as what she brings in is likely more herself and does not want to have any part of it because California laws being split community property. Megan clearly subscribes to the what's yours is mine, and what's mine is all mine philosophy. Harry, on the other hand, has been complacent with his naivety and satisfaction yet unimaginably incapable of cherishing it. This show how much of lighter installments he was, useless and selfish sundrunk prince preferring loafed off to royal undertaking. Harry discounted her plan to create a non-traditional royal family in America and selling goods with the support of the crown telling Meghan it is never going to happen. She panted a carefree, drop everything and be spoiled image that someone else would take over for them. This was a vision which indulged Harry and by what he judged to reality. However, the ex-queen was against lowering the monarchy's status and stripped him of his right to call himself his royal highness or carry out most royal duties. Lazy Harry, therefore, is all alone and powerless and ineffectual waif in the marked life placement of humanity. This is strictly his own fault he got himself to this state. He projects a blithe personality which hums and haws quite charismatically, but holds zero responsibility for his actions, the very personification of indolence brimming with an annoyed bitterness. Do you think Harry is morally ambiguous or cruel? A lot of this judgment would seem to be derived from one's own sense about what being morally wrong or right feels like. In the UK however, a more precise terminology is used which encompasses almost all type of behaviors. To take an example from America, bad probably means something strange in their local dialect that makes it a rather positive trait and would likely not mean literally bad according to the generally accepted definition. So how does that position Harry in a negative light? Amundsen relates a similar encounter in his book Spare where, after an argument with Nils Christian about what it meant to be the living embodiment of Christ on earth, she expressed hostility towards her father's car by taking several shots from relatively close range that could have been mistaken for helicopters firing at him, which he ultimately abandoned. Does this show Amalekas intent or are they just scared of what might happen if you hurt someone in that position? It could be looked at as a hint of an uncontrolled darkness lying beneath the surface. For instance, despite the pandemic restrictions he did go to his grandfather's funeral as one of 30 persons allowed at that time. The following day, in time to get back for his grandmother's birthday just days after her husband had been laid to rest, he headed off. Was it an insensitive withdrawal as Nandi suggested in her poem, his grandmother needing the space? Did he feel his granny needed the full support of a family, or was it just that coming back to America meant being with his family and bull like you granny in England? Was he acceding to his grandmother's wish for solitude, 
or was instead taking advantage of an opportunity to get home back to America and leave the grieving crew behind? While his book was not published at the time yet he and his Semite had already been going public with their opinions to some family members. If he had not left, they probably would have talked to him more privately about what he did. That was guilt or he did it so as not to face the consequences of his actions. More recently, after the king accepted that Harry desired to run away with his family from not supportiously working for Spain any longer he sent well wishes over there across the pond. But there was a catch, as the king must enact several stipulations before his son had agreed to be present at his coronation. It's not often that an invitee in the UK behaves this way. Harry has also broken any number of established protocols on the conduct that is acceptable in the UK, Matt Cardi slash Getty Images does this suggest that Harry possesses no manners, or is he just been rude? Having now assumed command of his life, he is in no longer involved in the rival family's work to assist the monarch. How does he expect a man in his mid-seventies with an energy-sapping profession to drop everything and catch 6,000 miles of flight just to meet the children who Harry has really only interacted with through video chats and telephone conversations? Harry can dash off to the UK if it matters to him, but his ever-growing list of priorities somehow doesn't extend that far. Could it be that he maintains private contact with his family while publicly disparaging them for financial gain? I acknowledge my lack of certainty due to the overlapping realms of private and public interactions, of which only a fraction is disclosed. Moreover, there exists a multitude of vested interests and betrayals as individuals vie for security by ingratiating themselves with those in power. I can envision Ms. Markle being perceived as assertive, yet this privileged group of billionaires likely considers anyone outside centuries-old lineages or lacking substantial wealth as such. They possibly anticipated American work standards. Oh, how scandalous. And I imagine they are quite a dull lot. Regarding Harry, there are indications of negative behavior, such as him mistreating staff with his tricycle, mocking a disabled teacher, engaging in reckless activities like substance abuse and sex parties, and involving himself in embarrassing incidents like being photographed nude in Las Vegas or wearing a Nazi uniform at events. He also seemingly spends leisure time playing video games in a secure bunker guarded by specialized Gurkhas around the clock. The most courageous, devoted, skilled soldier in the British Army, Sarah Forsyth, engaged in academic dishonesty by cheating on exams, resulting in her dismissal. Subsequently, she brought legal action against Eaton and successfully obtained compensation. A similar situation occurred at Sandhurst where Sarah's peers completed her work as the examiners turned a blind eye. Harry caused severe harm to multiple Afghani women through brutal attacks, leading to the royal family compensating for numerous distressing incidents, such as his intoxicated state. The Invictus Games were established by the royal family, inspired by the Warriors Games in Colorado overseen by the Ministry of Defense and Generals Gary Cheek and John Warding. Back in 2010, well before receiving the Invictus Games as a gift, three educated women, Cassandra, Chelsea, and Caroline, adamantly refused to marry him for various reasons. Harry, a foolish, ignorant, and conceited individual, resorted to associating with a sex worker from Epstein's yacht due to the lack of interest from any respectable and conscientious woman. The disrespect shown by Harry towards both Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth during their final years deeply hurt them, leading to their sorrowful demise. Harry and his partner's actions towards the royal family are inexcusable, as they abandoned their duties and inflicted emotional distress on Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip. Therefore, Prince William has no reason to forgive their actions. Let us remember the extremely unpleasant actions the witch has committed and will keep on committing against Princess Charlotte. Let us not overlook the witch's habit of taking everything she could. Perhaps if an unlikely event occurred, Prince William might think about forgiving Harry, but I don't believe it. I wouldn't. Nor confide in these two dreadful individuals. Today, I want to write about a fun topic with you the possibility of divorce between Harry and Meghan. Will Meghan be able to claim a share of the royal finances if she and Harry divorce? How does the bank look at this?
Please share your view before going to the analysis. Thank you very much for your opinion. It is not uncommon for a wife to want financial relief in divorce. But it is not clear how much money Harry will have by then. Legally or morally, the monarchy does not have to pay Meghan anything, although breaking up might also be expensive. In usual cases people are paid quite well to keep quiet with situations and dodge bad reviews. Who knows what leverage Meghan has in negotiations, since her reputation and credibility are so damaged at this point. Only time will tell, but it seems that she may only get as much as Harry is willing to give her. Meghan hasn't got the same opportunities for earning as Harry does not have a traditional job the fact is, her marriage to the royal family might have been wrong thing a way out but not many options for financial help. Well, it seems that her appeal to get child support from King Charles was pretty speedily rebuffed, and not by any court, particularly those attached in any way the royal family. With regards to any claims against the monarch, Meghan is unlikely to have much more success especially when it comes to assets like Frogmore that should be rightfully passed down via the crown. While there may be some assets to divvy up, King Charles would probably get stuck paying a convince Meghan to leave stipend. If unresolved, they could find themselves struggling to escape this very situation in the future. Should the worst happen, Meghan and Harry may put at risk custody of Archie. Responsibility of parents are mentioned in the Children and Families Act 2014 with whom children should live. Regardless of the divorce, the monarch is expected to keep custody of Archie. Whereas a child's biological mother automatically acquires parental responsibility for her child, a father will be able to gain asterisk acquired privileges in another word? After a divorce, there are still parental rights and duties unless the court otherwise rules in cases of child protection hearings. That language is sometimes written as a legal rule, making the responsibility of care and supervision irrevocable under the law. There are no exceptions under the Act for compliance with it by a monarch. Therefore, the Act is subject to no royal prerogative. The Queen will now no longer have any jurisdiction over Archie as he is just her great-grandson. b. Custody without possession. No non-custodial parent shall be entitled to receive custody except by court order if the custodial ward lives in a legal residence of another. It is the case that Charles may have some rights here, but those are not for custody. Should they split, it could mean baby Archie would be stuck in Britain possibly with his dad. Because there is still a father and parental responsibility to be taken even in changed circumstances, regardless of the awarded custody. In addition, until many of the other members of his family are deceased throughout Archie is a rather slim chance that he would actually inherit. Call me if you think that's going to happen, and then I will concede we have a prerogative. As Archie is his nephew, not child or grandchild the prerogative would not pass to William. Such a contest over custody is also probable to go down as K has a longer tradition of parental responsibility, which is more like the U.S., where it remains inalienable, except for child protection. In the U.K. today, residency simply refers to where someone lives, at least with respect to children. When it comes to the possible custody of Archie, Meghan Markle and Harry's baby son let us first clarify that there is no law or precedent in place which means he would automatically live with a reigning monarch should they divorce. With the loss of any marriage, child custody is usually done according to whichever method represents what best benefits all parties involved and most typically decided through legal proceedings. Substantial factors are those that affect the child's overall well-being, considering all possible needs including relationships with both parents, lifestyle in their present environment, and either prevent or permit the fast implementation of a decision to change custody. The British royal family has its own traditions and protocols, but custody of royal children is generally a private matter between the families involved. Similarly, if Meghan and Harry were to separate or divorce, they would come up with custody agreements that best served Archie likely in coordination between the couple's legal professionals or advisors. Harry, you see, is sixth in the line of succession at this point after Charles, number one, William number two and then his children, George first up as third in line before Charlotte and now Louis. 
The divorce courts those which signed off on the agreement she and Harry inked would step in should anything happen to the five people who stand between Archie descending from line of succession. It did contribute towards Meghan's unhappiness of the royal family when she learned that this revelation was why Harry had been her second-choice prince. That situation then became worse for Meghan as William and Kate welcomed children of their own, with her being placed even further down the royal line pecking order below all three of William's kids and Archie described virtually irrelevant. Gensler was deemed by NLRB to have engaged in oppressive conduct a very strong term at the time especially for someone with such well-documented narcissistic tendencies. Even Meghan's ex-husband, Trevor, saw it coming. He had previously toyed with the idea of creating a TV series in which Prince Harry splits up with his American wife Meghan and co-parent their child together, Archie. I wonder if this was all planned. So, in the event that Meghan would end up splitting with Harry, could she claim custody? Yes. She is ready to struggle for her rights, her sons, and goodness sake financial stability. She was saying to Harry in no uncertain terms that a divorce would be best for him. Now it is her son, and not she only him. Before filing for divorce, Meghan had done a lot of research. But, she knows how much Harry is worth, where his assets are and the reach of inheritance. She makes duplicates of all his financial records. Harry gives Meghan everything she wants for there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed, and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the open. Divorce is going to happen and if it does incoming settlement talks will be between Meghan and Harry only. There is no requirement at all for the royal family to fund her in any way. It appears that a good chunk of Harry's fortune ended up in Doria bank account. How the hell does that bitch have a $9 million net worth any other way? Hell, I have no shame in saying that when it comes to divorce processes in the United States shit is downright foreign. In the UK property is never split 50 50 but usually with some caveats such as if kids are involved and mum gets custody then she gets to keep living in former marital home etc. A realistic possibility is joint custody. The couple carried on sharing custody of their sons, but continued to divorce in the UK. The royals are under no obligation to pay her any money. Harry can eventually see the light, return to England and redeem himself. As we discovered today, Meghan is not likely to be able to trick anyone else as her true colors appear well and truly on the radar screen. Unless, of course, she meets someone as wily that old fox Rupert Murdoch, even he is unlikely to blink his one-eyed view. The only thing that binds Harry and Meghan over respective children who will be polluted with her hatred of the royal family. Hopefully someday they will reveal the truth. Meghan is clawing every dime she can get from Harry and the royal family have always been her ticket to easy street and fame. She will probably never succeed in politics or anything else because she always reveals her inner chameleonesque tendencies. Of course, that will make it tricky to do. In the event Harry and Meghan were to divorce an American, joint custody would be presumed absent a judge determining one or both of them unfit. No longer can one mother walk into a court and say, but your honor I am their mother. That time has long passed, and today fathers are given the same rights as mothers. It is, after all the children that judges rule in favor of anything they decide has to be what's best for these kids. They would also take into account Archie's relatives here family matters too, against Granny only. Born in England, he has an even larger extended family with lots of aunts, uncles and cousins. Again, if Harry was to bring him back to the UK and or then move on again it would show exactly that the kid had no affordable home in a country he has never resided so surely there will just have be custody battle between the two countries. Yet for Archie that would be an 11-hour plane trip if compelled by any American court to make such jaunts, which seems unlikely. It is more likely that he would live in the States with Meghan or England with Harry. These things would be taken into consideration by the judge as all are part of Archie's ingrained roots and joy with school. If Meghan wants to be a star running off and leaving Archie with the nanny or grandma Doria, an American judge might rule it better for him to live in the big ancestral pile surrounded by his many English relatives, complete with Harry. And then she would travel to see Archie. 
They could work out some type of financial deal with Harry having full custody of Archie, as Meghan is said to have no plans ever living in England again. Harry has to also live close to Meghan so they both get the same amount of time with Archie during his upbringing should he wish stay here. The learning situation could be the more significant concern, and that might depend on how long Archie has been schooled this way, he may have made friends at school here. If an agreement could not be reached, it would go to court. One of the most hotly discussed points is whether or not the Queen has powers bring Archie back to Britain. It was claimed that she can as a lawful guardian of all underage children, while others denied the same due to her great-grandkids. The problem is that a lot of people say it was finally superseded by more recent laws and, primarily, common decency for human-to-human -human communication. However, it would be the English legal professionals who will decide whether to proceed with this or not. But the potential troublemakers would be whether he should have to wait any length of time after moving to America and how soon Archie must enroll in school. American judges generally try not to uproot a child from his or her familiar surroundings. It would also factor in benefiting from moving him to England where there is a large extended family around Engels. Coos County judges emphasize the importance of a family for children. Similarly during actor Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie's divorce, a judge in their case ordered that the children could not be moved abroad by mom unless they reached adulthood, with them being based both parent near each other until all kids reach 18 years old. So, she bought a house near Brad and they are all really copacetic. In this scenario, for two high-drama ex-royals now living on different continents to go to war over how the other is bringing up their shared child in his countries would be an unprecedented international custody battle that somehow seems perfect for Harry and Meghan. That said, is calling Meghan Harry's Achilles heel simply an opportunistic and disparaging line to stand on right now? Is this a romantic gesture? Absolutely not. It is an almost rash step to take. In other words, Meghan has placed Harry under a spell and he is nothing but one of her pawns. As Harry had not realized this, he did not have the capacity to see why Meghan was acting in certain way as how it may or may not be leading him down a path of, insert positive slash bad tart get. Instead, Harry always stays to the right while Meghan consistently prefers walking on the left side. Need proof? Change your deck stop two face you do my eyes were drawn away his by J7D on jump rope. What caught Harry off guard were the racist remarks by Meghan against some members of his family. Later on, they even had an argument where word as she took home the win. The allegations of racism appear to have gone unacknowledged in advance of the episode airing. In the wake of that, it was reported Harry feared she would dump him. She has him completely at bay as he's quite aware and she just pleads it. This had been the pattern up to this point, leaving him guessing her intention until she spoke. He is afraid he will misinterpret her teaching and complicate the situation with inappropriate comments when his daughter brings up slavery in connection to children. The titles of the children were published in People magazine on which report rumors circulated that there was a tragic falling out between them. Claims Harry is said to only receive good news as he has lost touch with everyone really and one of the reasons behind their lack of contact could be by choice. Ms. Meghan's standard defense is that it must have been a member of the royal family who leaked the details because she wouldn't stoop so low. Well, at least that is what countless trustworthy reports claim. According to sources, Meghan currently writes for several friendly magazines and negotiates the terms of her articles with them directly. There are countless reports of violent fights between the couple, which have even left Harry with visible bruising to his face after they've kicked off over money. In addition to the horrible unseen breakup, he also apparently has no access to them bands they chuck about and thinks Doria, her mom, gets cash money while leaving him in the dark as regards their financial status. His partner continued, it was been commented on a lot about how much Harry pleaded with me not to leave him and several times he cried saying please don't go. She has also been accused of landing blows whenever they have arguments and throwing objects at him. Under these conditions it is only natural that those around Harry are worried about his mental health. 
he has repeatedly pleaded his partner not to leave him for fear of being abandoned and worry about public reception. He knows that people may make fun of him and is living a difficult, uncertain life. Thinking about his past and present might make him realize why he should be going through this situation. They have since parted ways, with Harry said to be crying in bed at his hotel following their bust up. Trapped and harassed, when will this be over? But he is not alone in this painful process, as the message of inevitability must also go across Harry's partner. If Charles goes on supporting her in this lavish style, he could find himself losing vastly more than half of an eventual divorce settlement. Maybe that will be another rich man, where she hopefully finds financial safety in the future. Still, shiny as it sounds, there's no way a high-profile divorce and messy spat with the royal family helps her image out in the press. It would be nothing short of a surprise to the media if it was but Harry's missus, who need not think she needs anyone else. Have other issues they must work through. Is it because she left the marriage that many wonder why would this woman have two children it is seen that the observers find out deceit and manipulative stuffs in her relationship and this leads to a cycle of fight and make-up sessions, with the narcissist using it as an opportunity by seeking indulgence from royal corners. An apoplectic nation has been calling for the truth over a series of regular letters to the palace concerning Babygate. As he receives intensive treatment for his cancer, King Charles hardly needed the headache of having to field demands that he stripe out of line succession these phantom young as indicated. It is almost beyond belief what happened. Could it get worse? Of course, there is a chance. Harry had received a warning from his brother to watch himself and really get to know her, advice he should have taken. The friends who loved him the most, and whom he trusted above all others had cautioned against binding himself to her forever. All these were red flags he missed. And all, persistently without exception to a person told him he was doing the wrong thing and urged for God's sake run in the opposite direction as fast as possible, Prince Philip recalled. He cannot say he was not warned. A letter even from her own brother cautioned him. He really did this by himself. If he really wants to get out of it, then instead of coming across as a whiny teenage boy asking his mother for the keys back to her car after grounding him in front everyone else around town that has no idea what you're talking about, address this shit head on. He should also tell her to go away. For starters, he can apologize to his family in a public forum for behaving like an irresponsible and reckless child towards them. A nasty divorce would be a minor concern at this point. Now, I am not condoning Harry, but what he could do in the future does concern me. The sheer magnitude of the pressure over time feels unsustainable. It seems that he is not mentally strong enough to battle through it, fight back or just break and self-rescue. Or they are both amoral, from my point of view. I said, in that case they would save their skin first thing and think even the devil second. Harry is a despicable human but I am not convinced he merits whatever fate awaits him. Harry's dad must be suffering an incredible amount on many levels. It turns out that truth is stranger than fiction. Shit is really fucked. I highly doubt that the pain Harry is going through now could top what he felt when people threw racist vitriol his way initially because of how missy, quaint and artificial Markle was. However, if for example we play a little thought experiment where Harry admits humbly to Charles and William that he did it, let me dream, they would leap into action together in facilitating his escape. They might organize an escape for him to live the rest of his life peacefully back in UK. They cannot allow him to perform royal duties as a working member of the family however, what one should take away from these terms is they are all conditional to Harry's lifelong obedience. Except, it's the final chapter. I say this because I see Harry killing himself soon enough. Well, this is what you get for making the man least popular with cool British people, i.e. Prince William, a prince and therefore by extension some kind of royal. He 100% deserves it, in spite of his toils at the moment. They are also both very troubled people and a danger to society. Things are gonna get more interesting when it hits the fan for sure. I am sure that anyone reasonable will understand the critical nature of these despicable figures. We just require hard evidence. On the other hand, 
Harry's own issues surely do nothing to contribute towards helping the king in his recovery. Even though they are not together the king loves his son. The king was bound to worry even more for the younger son, and every time he saw him struggle it just added weight on his mind. Goodness we understand that the queen is very anxious for her husband's welfare. Certainly, are all trying to do our best to keep Shane focused on anything other than the woes of the family, but her powers were only so strong. Despite Harry's comments, Diana confirmed that the king was a great father. This was a sentiment she earlier underscored again multiple times before death. If you want to see the loving side of the king as a father, just look at his expressions when he is standing next to Prince Charles. That's it for our video my friends, I hope you have liked it, please let me know your thoughts in the comments, and like the video. If you haven't done so yet if you want to be first to be informed about my content, please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on notifications. Thank you for spending this time with me, take care of yourself and stay healthy, I'll see you in the next one.